interesting. Hi guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel where I review all kinds of books but mainly lean towards darker fiction and I also document my quest to become a published writer myself. So when you're watching this, it will be Monday, hopefully, and on Mondays I like to recommend another small booktuber, uh, which is anyone less than a thousand subscribers. And one that I found recently, uh, I think she only started her booktube channel about a month ago, is One Page at a Time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. I always sing that up with my boyfriend, he hates it. Uh, but one page at a time, she is a booktuber, of course. She is a thriller reader and writer herself. Uh, I'm not sure if she's published anything yet, but she's definitely writing thrillers. She also has a bookstagram that you can check out. And at the minute, she has lots of recommendation videos, vlog videos, and just good bookish content for you to check out. And you can give her a like and a subscription if you like what she's doing. But for myself today, I am doing the Horror in 24 readathon, and today's prompt is number three. You can check out my video for number one and two, which I mashed together uh, up above. It's Ruins by Andrew Culp. But today's one is number three, which is read a book featuring supernatural creatures, uh, i.e., vampires, zombies, and werewolves, which is what I'm picking today, which makes Alice quite a. Uh, quite in vogue. Um, so the book that I have chosen is Carnivorous Lunar Activities by Max Booth III and the first thing I want to say is don't buy this book. Don't buy it. Stop right there. You shouldn't be buying it. And the reason I say this is because I found this book because I saw that the author had put out a tweet saying that a certain book, which turned out to be this, uh, he was not getting any royalties for it, he wasn't getting paid for it. Um, I'm not sure why, uh, but the publisher is just not paying him for it. Um, I think he even said this isn't the first time this has happened to him, which is just crap. Uh, so he said that if anyone wanted to read it, um, they shouldn't buy it, but that he would send them a free copy in their email. So I DM'd him and he kindly sent me a copy of it. Uh, I did send him a uh, completely unrelated just a few quid you know to buy a coffee or something absolutely not related to the book at all uh just fyi but i also bought a couple of his, his other books as well that he said were safe to buy that he was getting paid for them um but yeah so don't buy this book if you want to get it you can uh message him on twitter and he will send you a free copy so that's cool but anyway back to the book um so Carnivorous Lunar Activities uh, follows Ted, and Ted is not having the best time of it. Ted's wife has just left him, and the book opens on him waiting outside his uh, mother-in-law's house. Uh, he's waiting to try and ambush his wife to see if he can speak to her and apologise and get things back together again. But he gets an out of the blue call from his old friend Justin. Um, they've been best friends since they were kids. They haven't spoken in a while, but Justin really needs him to come over and see him um, to the old house where he has always lived, that he's now inherited from his mother who passed recently. And he wants him to bring loads of food and just come over because he needs to tell him something. Seeing as nothing's happen happening at his mother's house with uh, Shelley. So Ted shows up at the house and Justin is not looking great. He has long shaggy hair, he's very thin, he's very hungry and Justin tells him that he is a werewolf. Uh, Ted doesn't know what to believe, he's trying to reason with him, he's trying to get the facts straight, he's trying to figure out why his house looks a mess and whatnot. And during the course of their conversation, Justin chains himself in the basement and gives Ted a gun with two silver bullets and pleads with him to shoot him in the heart once the moon rises and he changes. Um, so all in all, not a good day for poor old Ted. Um, so in praise of uh, Carnivore's Lunar Activities, Josh Mallerman, um, the guy who wrote Bird Box, he said that it starts off very much like a play and I definitely have to agree with that. It's 
The majority of the book uh, is done just in the basement of Justin's house and it is pretty much just dialogue between Ted and Justin. Justin is trying to explain the events that have led up to this and trying to convince his friend that he is in fact a werewolf even though he doesn't fully know himself because he doesn't have any memory of what happens. He just wakes up with no memory and strange things around him, uh, often a lot of blood. Initially I was a little sceptical about the setup of the book. I thought that maybe I would get a bit bored but honestly Booth is very skilled with dialogue. It's, it's not just someone telling a story at you. There's back and forths, there's interruptions as there would be between friends. There's a ridiculous in-jokes and ridiculous uh, juvenile jokes that there just are between good friends that have been friends since childhood. And you as the reader becomes locked into this conundrum of is Justin telling the truth? Is he lying? Does he think he's telling the truth? You're wondering just as Ted is what's really going on here is is Justin just sick? Does he need mental health help? Uh, or has he been drinking too much? Because he has definitely been drinking too much. Or is there something more going on here? Things seem to be adding up. Some things aren't as clear. Um, he can tell that something isn't quite right but he's just not sure what it is and as the reader you're completely there with him. And while Justin is confessing to strange things that have been happening uh, in their area recently, uh, Ted is also not a saint. He swings wildly from thinking about Shelley and wanting her back because she's the love of his life to sending her voicemails of threats if she doesn't speak to him, um, threatening to kill himself, threatening to himself that if he can't have her, no one can have her and just crazy violent thoughts while he's trying to help his friend and while he at times wants to just leave his friend where he is because he'd rather not be dealing with it so I think one of the reasons I liked it um, was because the characters in it are just so ordinary they're just so gritty and dirty and normal um, they're they're painfully relatable at times. I think none of them are perfect, none of them are saints, none of them are heroic in any way, but it just it makes for a really good story and it makes for a much more layered story, especially when it's based so much on dialogue as well. I really don't want to spoil the story because it was so fun reading it with going into it with absolutely no knowledge of it, but I will say that um, the story does move out of the basement and there is horror, there is some gore um, if you're either looking for that or looking to avoid that. And as Malaman said, again, it transforms into a blood bright explosion of horror joy, uh, which is just a great sentence to be honest, but uh, it's also very true. Um, so it does go from sort of this building tension of dialogue between these two to a gruesome ending. I love the exploration of a love that hurts, of a friendship that hurts as well, a friendship that can betray and the real normalness of the characters in this bizarre situation. Booth really brings them to life really well. I really enjoyed Carnivorous Lunar Activities and I'm really glad that I found it on Twitter. Again, don't buy this book but definitely read it. I've already bought a couple of uh, Booth's other books that he said were safe to buy, so I'm really looking forward to diving into those. I think he's a great writer and I'm happy to read his stuff again. So that is my number three prompt for horror in 24. Let me know what your favorite monster story is down below or anything that you've read recently that you think I might like. Uh, don't forget to check out one page at a time. Uh, terrible sorry for that. Um, don't forget to check out her channel. Um, thank you so much for watching this far. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing for everyone who has subscribed. If you like what I'm doing here, you can like and subscribe down below. And I shall see you tomorrow for my number four prompt, which is a gothic horror novel. And I'm very excited 
to have read an Irish author for this, uh, The Unforeseen by Dorothy McArdle. I have a lot to say about this book. A lot to say. Uh, so thank you for watching and I shall see you in that video tomorrow.